Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be finishing up our series Doubting Philosophical Distinctions, Necessary, A Priori, Analytic, and Where They Fall Apart with Kant, Kripke, and Quine. In this video we're going to be looking at Kripke's contingent a priori statements. This is going to be the last video in the series, but please check out the other videos if you haven't watched them already and you're curious about the ways that these distinctions fall apart. So, Finally, Saul Kripke used the concept of rigid designators to argue that there are some statements which are contingent, not true in all possible worlds, but also a priori, knowable without experience. He does so in a similar but slightly different way to the necessary a posteriori examples. So take the example of a particular stick, stick S. This stick has different lengths in different possible worlds. In some possible worlds, it is a meter, and in one such world, W, it is used as the definition of the meter for the metric system in that world. S is a rigid designator. It refers to that stick in all possible worlds where that stick exists. However, the length of S is not a rigid designator because the, its length is different in every possible world. So now take the statement, the length of S is one meter. This statement is contingent. One meter refers to a length that is a rigid designator. A meter is a meter no matter what world you're in. Now, people in that world may call different things a meter, but a meter, as in the term that refers to a specific length of measurement, that length of measurement is the same, and those words a meter refer to it across worlds, even if other people use the words a meter to refer to something different. When we're saying a meter, we're referring rigidly to that length. But the length of s is not rigidly designating a distance because s is different lengths in different worlds. Therefore, this statement is contingent. The stick is different lengths in different worlds, so it is true in some possible worlds that the length of S is one meter and false in others. In some possible worlds, S is longer than a meter. In other possible worlds, S is shorter than a meter. Once again, the length of S is not rigidly designated, but the concept of a meter is rigidly designated. However, for someone in world W, where this information would be a priori because remember in world w stick s is actually used as the way to tell what a meter is it's used as the gold standard it's what everyone creates meter sticks based on and it also happens to be a meter the actual length of a meter and so for someone in world W, this information would be a priori, as the meter system or the metric system is defined by the length of S. We would not need to measure S in that world to discover its length. It must be a meter, since the metric system is defined in reference to it. Therefore, we would have a statement which is contingent, but a priori for some people, namely the people that are in that world, where... S is used to define a meter. Now, others have taken Kripke's theories to apply to indexicals as well. Take the statement, I am here now. It should be clear that in some other world, I might be somewhere else, but I and here pick out the same locations because I am here rigidly designating. So I is picking out me, in that other world, but here is picking out the same location that I am in in this world. So, because the location and me as a person are rigidly designated, in another possible world where I'm not in the same spot that I am in in the actual world, that statement would be false. So, because both I and here rigidly designate the same thing in this world. So let's say I designates me as a person. Here designates this a park. If we then apply that to another possible world, so in this possible world, let's say I'm saying I am here now in that park. Now in the other possible world, I am not in that park, but the I designates me and the here designates that park. 
the statement then is false. So if the statement I am here now is true in some worlds and false in others, it's contingent, not necessary. However, I should be able to know that I am here now without experience, as in this world, wherever I, whenever I reference here, that's where I am. All right? You may be somewhat concerned with the way that we're treating modality in both of these situations. You might say with the meter sticks, for example, well, maybe you can't know that statement a priori actually because you don't know that your definition of a meter in that world is actually the real definition of a meter. Um, that might be one thing you could say. You might be concerned with these examples here with, is here really a rigid designator? If we were saying, I am here in another world, would it really be referencing the same here or would it be referencing the different here that's actually the place that I am or that my cross world, trans world counterpart is? Eh. There's some issues here. I advise that you check out uh, Kripke's modal semantics for some other ideas on Kripke's modal logic, though. That's not going to perfectly solve some of these issues and these problems. But that's the basic idea that when you have rigid designators, you can have statements which are contingent, true differently in different possible worlds, but a priori knowable without experience. To summarize, in this series, we have seen reasons to doubt that the analytic synthetic distinction exists and seen a case made for necessary a posteriori statements as well as contingent a priori statements. If you think that these philosophers have met their burden of proof, it seems that we can no longer conclude that if something is necessary, that it must be a priori and analytic or vice versa. In fact, there's a lot more levels of this distinction. However, you may not think that these philosophers have met their burden of proof. You may think that the analytic distinction, synthetic distinction is a legitimate distinction and Quine has gone awry here. You might be suspicious of some of Kripke's modal claims in the exact way that rigid designators do or should work. If you have those concerns, please offer them in the comments below. What do you think? Are the terms still interconnected or are some of these examples of where they fall apart convincing to you? Thanks again to Thorin Isaiah Malm Gren for funding this series. If you want to suggest a video, check out my page on Patreon. Like I said, usually we do uh, $10 a month donation is corresponding to a single video in our Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines series. But if you're picking out something that I've really wanted to do for a long time and it's a little bit longer, then it's likely that I'll do a bigger series like this. So check that out. Please donate. Help us out on the channel. Help us keep making these videos. Uh, watch this video and more here at carnadies.org and stay skeptical, everybody.